Okay, let's go. Court is now back in session. Mr. Justice, have you sorted things out with the defendant? Yes, Your Honor. We had a good talk. Hmm, very well. So will he testify? Your Honor, the defendant will not testify. What? Shame. And here I thought this was your big chance to turn the case around. Actually, it is. The defense would like to approach this case from a different angle, Your Honor. A different angle? If Mahi won't testify, then I know who will. I'd like I'd like to cross-examine the witness in this case, Lamara. Lamara? What are you up to now? I thought we determined yesterday that Lamara's testimony was insubstantial. There is nothing you can... Lamara was taken to the hospital yesterday with injuries. That's right, somebody attacked her. They wanted her out of the picture too. She was assaulted, Your Honor. Assaulted? Someone wanted Lamara dead. Thankfully, she was able to save herself. What? I've heard no such report. Really? Prosecutor Gavin. Why would anyone be out to kill Lamara? Can you think of a reason? Well... Think of how she's known in our country. A singer from overseas who doesn't speak English, yes? Yet someone tried to keep her mouth shut. Who could that have been? You don't think... I do. It was the same person who shot Mr. Latouse. The killer was afraid of her, afraid of what she might say. The defense believes that something was hidden in her testimony yesterday. Something that the killer doesn't want getting out. She was the one who outed, um... Darian. And, if Cla Clavier says he, he never got a report on this, could, uh, could he, Darian have pulled some strings to keep him from finding out? So, am I to understand that this is what you're saying? Namely, that there is a nugget of truth in Lamarra's testimony. A nugget we have yet to uncover? Exactly. Hmm. If Lamoro is attacked, then this has serious implications. Very well. There were some vague points in her testimony during yesterday's trial. Perhaps we did not inquire as deeply as we might have into some. The court will hear Lamoro's testimony once more. Lamoro, I must apologize. We must ask you to stand again and speak. You need not apologize. I know that Mahi is innocent. And I will do all that I can until the court realizes this. Let's review your testimony from yesterday. You told us you heard two gunshots and the shooter's voice through the window. And the voice belonged to Darian Crescent, yes? That is correct. At which point I proved she could not be correct. She couldn't have heard any of those things. The small window at the scene was closed and was found to be quite soundproof. You have nothing to say to that, Mr. Justice? I don't know exactly what yet, but I do know there's something there. That is, it seems much you do not know. And yet it is my duty to hear him out. Perhaps the witness would be so kind as to testify once more to the court? Of course, Your Honor. Let's hear it. I was on my way from the stage to the backstage exit. That's when I heard them, Mr. Latouse and the detective. 
I heard the faint sound of a gunshot and stopped. Then I heard another gunshot. There was the smell of gunpowder. I knew I must tell someone, but... How did you smell gunpowder through the... Hmm, that sounds weird. I was in a hurry, so I kept moving past the small window. Hmm, pretty much the same as yesterday's testimony. I am sorry. I am not used to speaking much in this language. Perhaps my descriptions are lacking in some way. Yet everything I have said here is the truth. Then it is my distinct displeasure to say this. What you have to have, what you have said to have happened is impossible. Do I have to repeat myself? Lamoureux was attacked because of this testimony. What, Trucy? Paolo, you know, for a moment there, you were pretty cool. But maybe I do better when I don't try to think ahead. Very well, Mr. Justice. Perhaps you can coolly cross-examine the witness. Okay. I was on my way from the stage. Is something wrong? I raise an objection. But she's saying the same thing she said before. Mr. Justice? Mm, sorry. It's nothing. Please continue with your testimony. Hmm. Now I know what they mean about the reckless youth these days. The one in red over there is a shining example here, Judge. You're the last person who should be pointing fingers, Mr. Rockstar. Darian Crescent? I did not know his name at the time, but yes, it was him, the one who took the stand yesterday. How many times do I need to remind you that's impossible? That is no way you could have heard him. Beca because the window at the scene was closed. Is that why? Of course. But what if it wasn't? Apollo, if we keep asking the same questions as yesterday, we won't get anywhere. She's right. Maybe there's a different angle I can try. What were they what were they talking about? Did you hear anything else? Hmm. Hey, what Lamara, did you by any chance remember what they were saying to each other? If so, please tell us. I have given it much reflection, but... I was afraid of this. She doesn't remember. I only heard one phrase clearly. A whole phrase? You remember something that was said? Why didn't you say anything yesterday? Though my memory is clear, I was afraid to speak. You see, I do not understand what was said. This could be it. The clue I've been waiting for. Well, what'd he say? It was the other man speaking, not Mr. Latouse. The shooter, then. Darian Crescent. Well, what'd he say? It's over. Press the switch. Now. Switch? Nintendo Switch? No. No, wait. I think I know... And the shooter said this to the victim, Mr. Latouse? I thought it quite strange myself, afterward. Hmm, it is a mystery. What could it possibly mean? Mr. Justice, care to shed some light on this? Uh, I mean, sure, I'd be delighted. It's, uh, very, very vital. Maybe we could add to the testimony. Maybe, Apollo? And it was Detective Darian Crescent's voice. Yes, I am sure of it. It's over. Press the switch. Why would he say that to Mr. Latouse? Apollo? 
The murder weapon? The revolver was Mr. Latusis, right? Yeah, what of it? Well, maybe when he said press the switch, he really, he really meant to say pull the trigger. Because his English isn't so good. Darian Crescent's a native speaker. Oh. Oh, right. Sorry. I kind of forgot who is what. Press the switch. That's not something a killer usually says to their victim, is it? Was there no one else in the room? I do not know. All I heard was Mr. Latouse and the detective. What about... Is he referring to this? Objection! Press the switch. There's only one key that can unlock the mystery of those words. Oh. Yet there was nothing at the scene that could be called a switch save the lights. True, there wasn't a switch at the scene. But it just so happens... I have a switch right here. That certainly does look like a switch, doesn't it? The problem is, this was found not at the scene of the crime, but on the stage. The stage? Where the concert was held, yes. This was found hidden there. On the stage. Are you claiming the voice Lamara heard was of someone commanding another to press the switch? It's a possibility. Oh, Herr Forehead, I'd like to... I'd call that an impossibility. Why? It's hardly necessary for me to remind the court of the layout of the concert form. The stage is quite far from Lamarra's dressing room. Not to mention that Gaveneers were in the middle of a concert on said stage. We aren't known for being a quiet band. You could shout all you wanted and not be heard. The detective's voice was loud, but certainly not a shout. So, too, have her forehead's cries of possibility fallen far short of being heard. Sorry, but he wouldn't have needed to shout. Excuse me? You heard what I said, or do you need me to shout it out for you? It would have been quite simple to be heard on the stage from that dressing room. Oh wait, you like evidence, don't you? How about this? Using this, it would be easy to get a message to someone on stage from the dressing room. That would be the headset, right? Yeah. Prosecutor Gavin, perhaps you're familiar with this? Why, that's... What? What is it? Is that some kind of newfangled phone they invented while I wasn't looking? Oh, those kinds of things... You can use those nowadays. <laughs> this is a type of transmitter, a communications device. Communications device? From what I've heard, that night, everyone on the stage was wearing one of these. Isn't that right, Prosecutor Gavin? Uh, yes, actually. That if a talking between band members. They all had one on. So you admit that if you were wearing one of these, talking from the backstage to the stage would be simple. Objection! True, but wait. Those send out an electronic signal. To avoid interference with the audio systems, their range is quite limited. Lamra said it was about 30 feet, right? Look at this cross-section diagram of the concert form. Uh, exactly. The walk from the stage to the, to the backstage seems far, but the direct distance is less than 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> what was that sound effect? That cannot be. 
So when Lamorar heard the shooter's voice, he could have been talking to someone on stage. <laughs> You're claiming this is the switch in question? Why did it have to be on the stage at the time? It could have been placed in a pocket and carried anywhere. Someone could have hit it on the stage after the fact. He's got a point. Yeah, we found it in the piano. How do we know where it was when she heard the voice? When the shooter said press the switch. I guess we don't. Hmm. An unfortunate situation. I'm afraid that until we know where this switch was, there's little point in debating it. Ugh. I was sure this was the way to go with this. What is this switch, anyway? We don't even know the, that basic fact. Or do we? Wait a second. I do know what this switch is. And if you follow that train of logic to its incredible conclusion, it ends up in proof that completely changes this case. What's up, Apollo? Apollo? We know about this switch, right? We know what it is. Yeah? Well, think of when it was used that day. Think of what happened. Well, Mr. Justice? If you have no further information to share concerning this switch... Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Justice? I've been remiss in not telling the court this before. I know what this switch is. Hmm? Well, it seems the defense is set upon linking this switch to the case. Let's see your evidence of the link. What evidence do you have to explain what this switch is? That would be... Yeah. Prosecutor Gavin, you remember this? Oh, that's that. That what? Is it another one of those newfangled phones? <laughs> I don't know, Judge. Try putting it up to your ear. This is an igniter. What phone looks like this? Igniter? You mean it's like a lighter? Yes, actually. You aren't saying this switch is a remote. I am. This is a remote trigger for an igniter. What? Look, I'll show you. Yo, yo, yo! Mr. Justice, you will cease and desist from burning down this courtroom! <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit more fire than I expected. If my whiskers had caught on fire... Prosecutor Gavin, let me repeat myself. This switch is a remote ignite igniter trigger. Doesn't that suggest something to you? You're talking about what happened to me, aren't you? Yep. The guitar catching fire? Exactly. That night at the concert, there was an unusual burst of flame. When your guitar caught fire in the middle of your performance. Wasn't that part of the stage show, though? No, I think we already established that. Prosecutor Gaiden was entirely unaware such a thing was planned. And the guitar that burned was a valuable keepsake. That's right, he got it in Burginia from Lamara. He said the sound was amazing, before it burned of course. Now it's just kind of smokes. The better the guitar, the brighter it burns. Head forehead. Yes? Don't tell me you're trying to tie these two things together. Those being the shooter's voice heard by Lamara, and the guitar is suddenly catching on fire. I am. It's really simple when you think about it. Mr. Latouse and the shooter were at the crime scene. The shooter was wearing a headset. He ordered someone on stage to press the switch. The switch was pressed and the guitar caught fire. Well, that does seem to make sense. 
Though something about it is bugging me. Can't quite put my finger on it. I'm wondering who he was talking to. Does this mean there was an accomplice? Really, it seems pretty simple to me. Objection! Head, forehead. Don't destroy what little respect I have for you. I was expecting something a little more sensible. I guess I was wrong. What's this all about, Prosecutor Gavin? His simple story simply makes no sense. Think. That night, my guitar caught fire, yes? The cause may have been this indeed. However, the guitar caught fire during the second set. That's right, of course. The guitar caught fire during Lamora's song. Indeed, yet the shooting happened during the third set. The two are utterly unrelated. Or are they? Hmm, yes, that must have been what was bugging me. The whole premise for this is faulty. See, his story makes no sense. Objection! Are you sure about that? What exactly do you mean, Mr. Justice? Maybe it's not the premise for my explanation of the switch that's at fault. Maybe it's our premise for the entire case so far. What premise is this specifically? I'm glad you asked. I'm saying maybe the killing didn't take place in the third act. Objection! What's this? But Detective Emma Sky heard shots and found the body. All of this happened in the third act. Gunshots rang out, and according to his testimony, Mahi was in that dressing room at that time. Where are you going with this, Mr. Justice? Stay with me, Your Honor. He also told us this in his testimony. Namely, that the victim had already been shot. We all heard gunshots, but no one saw the shooting. This... This is insane. Just before the shooting took place, the shooter was heard on his headset. Telling someone to press the switch. The next moment, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar burst into flame. We know that a remote-triggered igniter was found inside the guitar. From all these facts, we can draw only one conclusion. The crime did not take place during the third act. But during the ballad performance, the second act. <laughs> what? Order, order! But that goes against the evidence. What does, Your Honor? This crime was carried out according to the lyrics of the song, yes? He's right, look. The bullet is supposed to come after the fire. Or maybe was it was all this done to throw us off? You're thinking about it the wrong way. Hmm? Look, why would the shooter craft the events of the day to follow the lyrics anyway? It's an awful lot of trouble to go through. With little merit for the person doing it. Well, I'm sure whoever it was had some reason. Yes, they did. A reason that made it advantageous to follow the lyrics. You're saying the order was reversed on purpose. Oh, yeah. Hey, I... Hey, Danganronpa had a couple of cases like this, too, where... Where the killer tried to confuse us about the... The sequence of events. Reversed, Prosecutor Gavin? If the criminal followed the lyrics strictly, then yes. The shooting would have to come have come after the guitar burst into flame. Yet her forehead has raised another possibility. He's claiming that the bullet came not after, but just before the fire. Couldn't have put it better myself. 
We were only meant to think that the shooting came after the, the guitar burst into flame. That was the criminal's objective. The crime followed the lyrics to a point, but that was the ruse. Why else would the killer risk discovery by moving the body? And we still don't know what hap what Mahi was doing there, too. That was the final touch to make us think he followed the lyrics the whole way. Order, order, order! That would explain this most unusual situation. It does. The killer changed the order of events to create himself an alibi. In other words, the killer was someone who had an alibi for the third set, but not the second. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but sadly it has. Let me tell you why your little fairy tale makes no sense at all. Hmm? Oh, it sounds good, I'll give you that. You have given us a reason why the killer bothered following the lyrics of my song. But I question your logic. For it's flawed from the very beginning. Flawed? Yes. A contradiction, Herr Forehead. One I've pointed out several times, no less. At the time of the crime, the small window at the scene was closed. How could Lamara have heard a voice through it? Oh. I know that you would like to divert our attention from this critical fact, but you're basing your entire line of reasoning on a false premise. Right. Lamar's testimony is my entire case. That voice she heard. The shooter's voice. What if she couldn't hear it, Apollo? Look, what do we have? A man saying press the switch. And near the crime scene, we have a switch. Which acts as a remote trigger for an igniter. And last but not least, Prosecutor Gavin's flaming guitar. It can't all be coincidence. But how do I make it work? I say a more direct line of questioning is required. When the crime scene was investigated immediately after the scene... That window was closed. Care to tell us how Lamara heard the voice? Hmm. A key point to be sure. Mr. Justice, can you explain this to the court? Okay, Justice, you've got one thing to prove and one thing only. Lamara heard a voice. And she heard it during the second set. Think, how was Lamara able to hear the voice? I mean... Maybe the window was open at the time, but then maybe the killer closed it after? That... I mean... Obviously, the window was open. It had to be for, it had to be for her to hear that voice. News bulletin, Herr Forehead. That horse is dead. Stop beating it for all our sakes. That window was closed. This is a hard fact reported by the investigation team. But... Oh, you have evidence to the contrary, perhaps? Well, no, but... Then do be quiet. I tire of this charade. Ugh, time to rethink this. Lamara heard a voice. She heard it during the second set. Hmm. She has divine hearing, or she was somewhere else? I imagine her sense of hearing is... is probably better than the average. Her hearing... Because she is blind, maybe her hearing is better. That sounds a little too simple, though. Was she somewhere else? When we investigated the scene, the window was closed. The shooter had no reason to close it, had it been open either. Makes sense. Meaning it was impossible to hear the voice through that window. 
Ah, it's good to hear you making sense again. For a moment, I was afraid you might be a Burginian too. As I was saying, Lamorak could not hear the voice through that window. So there can be only one explanation. She heard the voice from another location entirely. What's this? <laughs> you do amuse me so. And here I thought you had good sense... You and good sense were back on speaking terms. Now I'm afraid you and good sense speak two entirely different languages. Shall I interpret for you, Herr Forehead? Lamara clearly stated she heard the voice through that small window. And there is only one small window at the scene. Are you sure? Hmm? Think about it. Isn't there another small window at the scene? There is? Oh, I know that look. He wants us to ask him. Very well. You claim Lamara heard the voice from another location? Mr. Justice, show us where this location was. She heard the voice from here. Okay, that's... If that's not it... What if it was through the air duct? This is where Lamora heard the voice from. But that's no small window. That's the air vent. What did she tell us? She said she's a Burginian, unfamiliar with our language. It's not a stretch to imagine she called this air vent a small window. Oh, is... Mm-hmm. Now you've done it. You've gone beyond ridiculous and into ludicrous. Ludicrous speed, go! So Lamela was up in the ventilation system listening to this man's voice. That's the only logical explanation, yes. Logical? I do not think this word means what you think it means, Herr Forehead. Okay, what about it isn't logical? Ha! Huh, it hardly met its saying. Why would Lamara be in the ventilation system? Hiding like a rat? No offense intended to her, of course. The explanation for that is simple, Prosecutor Gavin. Isn't it, Lamara? You've been listening to our discussion here, yes? Yes. I admit, it's had me quite confused since yesterday. Yes, the small window is closed. But why should that mean I could not hear through it? I feared our prosecutor might himself need an interpreter. Ooh-hoo! Zing. The problem here is words. Lamara, this small window through which you heard the voice. Was it up high on the ceiling of the room, not low on the wall? Yes, it was up on the ceiling. Uh, mm. <laughs> we all did we all just assume the window that we thought she heard it from? Witness, you'll clarify this statement to the court. Are you in fact saying you were up above the ceiling of the room? And that's where you heard the moment of the crime? Yes, in fact I was. I'm sorry, I never imagined it would become such an important point. Yes, well, why the heck were you up there? Yeah, well, I believe it's time for another testimony. I'm not sure I... I can't. May I remind you, this is a murder trial? We will hear your testimony. Tell us why you witnessed the crime from above the ceiling of that room. Please. Well, looks like I'm on the right track.
Yes, I was above the ceiling when I heard the voice. I had heard there was a small window there before. It was in the middle of my performance. I had no time to report what I had heard. As to why I was there, I cannot say. I am bound to secrecy on this matter. Oh, I think I know where... I think I know where we're going with this. In my line of work, one has many obligations to uphold. But you say you were in the middle of your performance. So this did happen during the second set. I did not witness the crime, you must understand. I only know what I heard. Yes, but you must tell us what you were doing in detail. That's what the cross-examination is for, ya, yeah, Herr Forehead? Our mission in this court is to discern the truth. No obligation, no binding pact, may hinder that mission. Hmm, very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross-examination. What are you going to do, Apollo? I'm going to find out the truth. She was up above that ceiling for a reason. I just have to get it out of her. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was above the ceiling when I heard the voice. By small window, you mean the air vent? I only remembered I needed to be careful of where I put my hands and feet. I cannot see the light coming through the window, of course. The air vent grate could trip you up, certainly. So, I was walking very carefully when I heard the gunshots. Startled, I crouched and listened. That is when I heard his voice come from the room. Darian's voice. I knew something terrible had happened, yet... I was in the middle of my performance. I had no time to report what I heard. So without a word, you just let the third set start? After the curtain closed for the second set, there was still much to do. You could have prevented this whole misunderstanding if you only told us sooner. Yes, perhaps I could have. I see little point in badgering the witness. What's done is done. The mind works differently when one is in the middle of a performance. But I have lost my voice in the middle of a show and kept on singing, completely unaware. Singing without a voice? If only all contradictions were so obvious. If only I could get Lamarra to talk. Pressuring her like this doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. As to why I was there, I cannot say. You heard the gunshots during the second set during your performance. You're quite sure? Yes. Why would I lie about the time? Why didn't you tell us this yesterday? No one asked me. I thought you all knew. Mm. <laughs> I told you Mahi was not the killer. I told you this many times. Yes, you did. But you never told us why. I am sorry. I was not able to speak of it. Unable or unwilling? She's not talking, Apollo. What do we do? We'll just have to prove it ourselves. As long as she's bound by this pact of silence, she won't talk. But if I can prove why she was up there, she'll have to admit it. But how are you going to do that? She was singing on the stage, Apollo. She couldn't have been up above the ceiling, too. Yes, she could. I've got a theory as to why, too. And maybe I've got the evidence to prove it. Do we have...
Oh, is it the... Uh, no? I thought for sure... No? Oh, wait. Oh, God. I thought it was this that I was presenting it on. Lamra, truth be told, the reason for your presence above that ceiling is quite clear. Especially when you consider what happened during your performance. What happened? Yes, it's all right here on this video. Oh, we're going to watch it again. As we can see, Lamara was clearly not on stage for her entire performance. Oh! Though it saddens me to be so realistic, Lamara is incapable of actually vanishing, let alone teleportation. So the only explanation is that she was hidden from view. And during that time, she moved to the back of the forum. Apollo! Oh, oh, Trucy's gonna be mad for revealing the, uh... Revealing the trick. It's not nice to reveal a magician's secrets. It's against the rules. But I'm a lawyer. I'm not supposed to be nice. This, this is all very fascinating. But how is it possible? There's only 20 seconds between when she disappears and reappears. She couldn't have moved that fast. It, is something wrong, Prosecutor Gaiman? This was his concert, his show. He knows how the illusion was performed. Aha! He's just realizing his own oversight. Hmm. Let's look at the cross-section diagram again. Here we can trace a route through the ceiling. It goes from the stage through the backstage to the rear of the forum. Ah! Oh. Recall Lamora's testimony from yesterday. I was on my way from the stage to the backstage exit. There was something like a little window there. That's how I saw it. She went from the stage to the backstage exit. A perfect description of the route above the ceiling. Lamra knew of this because of her part of the illusion. But she wasn't the only one who knew. What? Just now in the lobby, Mahi told me something. I know. I know if I opening vent, I can leave stage and back. Backstage. Right. He said that? Oh, were you not informed, Prosecutor Gavin? I... I knew about the Vanishing Act, of course. Yet, I had no idea of the route that would be used. Why didn't that magician tell me? You think he's gonna tell you, really? Magicians only reveal details of their acts on a need-to-know basis. They're the bread and butter of a magician's life, you know. Which is why he bound Lamara to secrecy. Well, Lamara? 
I am impressed, Mr. Attorney. Mahi was right about you. So what does this mean? Are you saying you used this route above the ceiling? I did. Well, that's that, but I'm still a little confused. Why is that, Your Honor? As I said before... There was very little time between when she disappeared and reappeared. 20 seconds tops. How could she do it so fast? Especially if she stopped to hear the shooter's voice. That's a good question. Can the witness explain this to the court? I... I cannot. Very well, Mr. Justice. Yes? It's all up to you. Do your thing. Um, what thing, Your Honor? You need to explain how Lamora was able to teleport like she did. Or I'm throwing your case out with the bathwater. Ugh. Why do I get picked on? It's Lamora who isn't going along with the program here. As I have stated before, I am not at liberty to speak of the illusion that night in detail. Then you'll just have to tell us what you can. We'll hear your testimony on this. Mr. Justice, it'll be your job to wring the truth out of her. Yes, if you would, please. Right. I feel like a student before finals. Good luck, Apollo. I followed the route exactly as I was instructed. There's an emergency exit in the backstage, where a stagehand waited. From there, one can enter the forum on the opposite side from the stage. The plan was for me to move there in two minutes. I was on my way when I heard the voice. Hmm. Two minutes, you say? The mystery deepens. Suppose it was too much to hope that the judge would come up with something. As does my curiosity. Take it away, Mr. Justice. Right, Your Honor. All I have to do is find the contradiction between what Lamora is saying and what we can see plainly in the video. I figured it out already. I'm a magician after all. Well, tell me. Not a chance. I can't reveal another magician's secret. Come on. Hey, you're supposed to be on my side here. the route exactly as instructed. How did you, uh, proceed along this road? How? Why, I walked. But you arrived behind the forum much too fast to have been walking. Tell the truth, Lamra. You rode some kind of vehicle. What? Apollo. What? A vehicle? What vehicle? What a novel idea. I like it. Hey, that's not a bad guess. Wrong, but not bad. <laughs> yes, laugh at the dumb attorney. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the girl is right. The vent was much too small for vehicles. It was a tight fit. Even I had to crouch as I walked. I cannot imagine a vehicle that would fit in such a small space. If it wasn't a vehicle, what was it? You had me going for a while, Mr. Justice. Too bad. Ready for the next part? Why do I feel like I'm on some kind of quiz show? Did everyone on the concert staff know about the trick? Not all. Only a few that were needed to help. See, like I said, it's on a need-to-know basis. So, not many people knew about the trick. What were these stagehands required to do? One needed to open the emergency exit. The door of the stairs is locked, but once through there... From there, one can enter the forum on the opposite side from the stage. So when you came back out, you were behind the audience. Yes, that is how it worked. 
not a bad show, if I do say so myself. That's Uncle Valent for you. The old Grammary touch. But on the video, you were only gone for 20 seconds. How is that possible? That's the part I don't get either. <laughs> yes, I would be... It would be hard to go so far in only 20 seconds. The plan was for me to move there in two minutes. Two minutes. Yes, it can be done in one minute if you're running. Running? In that cramped, dark tunnel above the ceiling? Haha. <laughs> Mr. Attorney, have you forgotten? Dark or lit, it makes no difference to me. Ah, that's true, but... So you're saying that on the night of the concert, you made the trip in two minutes? Yes, though I nearly didn't make it in time. You see, I stopped halfway. Lamorot disappears on the video for 20 seconds. But she says she made the trip in two minutes. How? If you want my professional opinion, I'll bet the answer's right there in that video. Well, Mr. Justice? Perhaps you have some evidence for us. Something that can explain the discrepancy between the video and her testimony? Ugh. Evidence explain the discrepancy. Hmm, I'm not sure. Do I even have anything yet? What kind of evidence could prove that? What's your professional opinion about this one, Trucy? Sorry, I don't work in evidence. And I don't work in tricks. I'm an attorney, not a magician for crying out loud. Damn it, Jim. Really? I'm sure Daddy would have loved working on this. Thanks, that makes me feel oh so much better. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I find this mystery fascinating. And I'm not letting this trial go any further until we get to the bottom of it. The defense will continue with the cross-examination until we have some answers. Easier said than done. I was on my way when I heard the voice. And it was Darian's voice you heard. Yes, I'm certain it was him. A matter best left for later, yeah? Put that forehead of yours to work on the illusion first. Hold on. I think the identity of the killer is a little more important, don't you? Important shmunportance. Objection overruled. Tell us about the illusion. No use trying to avoid the problem at hand, Apollo. Trying to avoid the problem. This is a murder trial. The killer's the problem. The contradiction between Lamora's testimony and the video. Unraveling an illusion can't be so difficult from solving a normal case, right? Sorry, Apollo, I'm not telling. Not even if you make those puppy dog faces. Fine, fine. Okay, I think... Which one was it? Okay, wait a second. Two minutes. Twice. Right. I think I I think I know exactly what the discrepancy between the video and I think there's there's one piece of evidence that explains the discrepancy between the video and the testimony. It was Lamara's brooch. We found it at the crime scene. But if if you remember in the video, when Lamara reappears, her brooch is missing. I noticed that fairly... Lamra, do you happen to remember this brooch? Ah, oh, the brooch! We saw that yesterday, did we not? It was found at the scene, Your Honor. 
and you're bringing this up now. Why? I thought we had already determined when that was dropped. So did I, but we hadn't. Take another look at the video. Oh boy. Again? But yeah, she's wearing the brooch there. Here you can see she's wearing the brooch. Hmm, so she is. Let's look a bit later. Right. And now it's gone. What? The brooch, it's gone! What? Yes. The brooch disappeared in the short space of 20 seconds. And it takes a full minute to run from the stage to the backstage. Which means there can be only one explanation. The Lamorau we see before the Vanishing Act and the Lamorau we see after are two different people. What? What? The brooch was found on the floor at the crime scene. And not just on the floor, but on the floor directly beneath the air vent. So, so did she drop it then, through the vent? Lamra, tell me, did you drop the brooch on your way from the stage to the backstage? At the very moment you witnessed the crime? Yes, I think I did. Order! Prosecutor Gavin! From your expression, I gather you had no idea this was the case, Herr Judge. I, of course, knew about it. What? Don't get me wrong, I wasn't hiding it, it just never occurred to me. That the switch and the shooting took place at the same time. So I was right, there was a switch? There was. Just before the stage's tower rose, Lamara was replaced. While we're on the subject, just who was this replacement Lamara? By the man behind the illusion? Valent Grammary. It's Grammary? That's quite the illusion, but I still don't get one thing. Yes? The switch happened before the tower rose, correct? So you weren't on stage. That's right. But this fake is still singing. And she's pretty good. That's true. Come on, Apollo, that's an easy one. They were just playing a recording. <laughs> it gave an ears on some kind of air guitar band, Fraulein. Oh, you mean I'm wrong? When we play a show live, we play live. No recordings. Perhaps you can explain, Lamara. Very well. Yes, do tell, and add it to your testimony. I had to keep singing even while I moved. But if that were the case, wouldn't the... Wouldn't the killer and the victim have heard you? You were singing. Yes. Mr. Gavin expressed a dislike for recordings. So I used this. Wait, so you were singing the whole time? Even while you were crawling above the ceiling toward the backstage? Why should it matter where I sing, when everywhere I go is the same darkness? But wouldn't you think in that... You were in that air vent, wouldn't the reverberation from that have been hell? I don't know about that. But if you were singing while you were walking... That's right, wouldn't the shooter and victim have heard? Yeah, exactly. She was singing right over their heads, after all. That's right. Are you sure? You'd have to be pretty hard of hearing to miss someone singing in the ceiling. Once again, we come back to the state of the scene of the crime. What state? 
I know what he means, that old speaker. Oh, right, it was blaring music when we came in. It, so it was... That speaker was blaring at the time of the murder. Ah, that's for monitoring the stage from this room. Monitoring? It pipes in a real-time feed from the stage microphones. Useful for knowing when your set's coming up. Is satisfied? That dressing room was fitted with a large speaker playing a direct feed from the stage. At my request, actually. So Lamoros singing in the ceiling sounded just like Lamoros singing over the speaker. Ingenious. Her voice was hidden by her voice. Ah. Uh, Lamora? I have just remembered something. Do tell. When I heard the noise, those gunshots, yes, it startled me, so I... So you... I stopped singing. What? I forgot the words I was supposed to sing. The song stopped. Thankfully, it was the very beginning of the second verse, so not many would notice. Forehead, that mixing board I'd lent you, where is it? The mixing, huh? Oh, th I knew this was going to come into play again. That machine, Apollo, the one that breaks music into tracks. Oh, this. I completely forgotten about it. Let's take a listen. Song does stop there. It does? I must have missed it. Look at the lyric sheet. The top of the second verse. See where it says pleasure, pleasure? Now listen again. This is evidence indeed. I believe we're guilty of making a terrible mistake. The crime didn't happen during the third set. It happened during the second, during Lamora's ballad. If that's true, then no one on stage during the second set could have been the shooter. Which means Darian Crescent could have done it. He wasn't on stage for the second set. Well, Prosecutor Gavin? Fascinating. I don't believe I've ever seen a trial turned around quite so thoroughly. Yet one problem remains. What's that, Prosecutor Gavin? Head Forehead's theory does have a certain kind of logic to it. Yet it's entirely based upon Lamoraw's testimony. Yes, is there a problem with this? Oh, he's still gonna say that she's covering for him. Well, it's quite simple, though it pains me to say it. What if she's lying to protect the defendant? But you have no proof. All I'm saying is that the truth is as yet unclear. Until we hear directly from the man himself. The man? You don't mean... Yes. Though he's a friend and band member, Darian Crescent must take the stand. 
I see no other way. As someone with a new perspective on the case. As a suspect, to be frank. Hmm. Finally, the rat's coming out of his hole. And I'm ready to catch him. Darian Crescent, get ready for justice. This is as good as time as any to pause for a brief recess. The prosecution will summon the witness. Have him here and ready by the time we begin. I'm the last man who needs to be reminded of what his duties are. Very well. Court is adjourned for a 15 minute recess. Perfect. Alright. Then I think this is a good spot to call it a night. And next time we will do the second half and see uh, Shark Boy hopefully get his. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.